you have chest hair? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> well, let's see it. Tape is going on. <laughs> <laughs> Testing. I'm not really a fan of working in my dungeon all the time, so it's kind of nice to be outside. Anyway, I just recently released a film called Viewfinder. I changed the name. It was spelled out a different way, and I changed it because people were mispronouncing it. So I changed it, and I think it's it's still fine. But yeah, a little little behind the scenes for you. It's, uh, it's now released on my channel. If you want to check it out, you can go to the link up there. It was, it was a lot of fun. And thank you to Mark Bone, who, who gave a little shout out to the video. You can check out his video as well up in one of these corners. Viewfinder, I hope I pronounce that viewfinder, viewfinder. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to make that. So thank you to everybody who's given me support and uh, the kind words. It's always awesome to see those. And yeah, we want to get into the to the video. Right, we got day one of cool. unnamed Kai documentary. How are you feeling? Feeling. I was gonna rhyme something with Kai, like a a big guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Well. For those who don't know, nobody knows. What am I talking about? I'm working on a new doc. It's a different one, a different style. A style called Cinema Verite and very run and gun. I wanted to kind of make a video to, to talk about that, talk about my process with that, what I'm learning as I, as I do it, help anybody along the way who's, who might be doing the same thing. So to first understand what even, what Cinema Verite is, this style of documentary is a lot different from other types because everything shown is trying to keep you in the current moment of the documentary. And doing this, you have to do a lot of prep beforehand to really understand your character and be aware of what's going on, really. So the more prep beforehand, the better, I think. But with documentary, you don't really know what you're gonna get until you start filming. So, but this one, this, this story is very interesting. It's about a friend of mine who suffered from a traumatic brain injury. It's kind of exploring what that means and what that means for him. He's also in preparation to get surgery soon. So, kind of following that. So, I'm gonna break down kind of what goes into the documentary Running Gun Verite Rig and what key elements have benefited me and what elements would benefit you in return. So, one of the first things to highlight here, um, especially on day one, was just having like a V-mount solution to my current setup. So my camera rig is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. Pocket 4K, it's okay, it does the job, but it's definitely not like documentary ready by any means. It's kind of like tedious, honestly, but it works, it's what I got, so. I want a V-mount solution on there for documentary work, especially with this type of style, because Pocket 4K battery life is not very good. So having a V-mount solution is probably the best decision you can make. So I'm filming in 4K B-RAW. That's a pretty big file size at the end of the day. And when you're filming for like three hours or so, it's important to have that battery life, not have to worry about swapping things. Because the whole point here is you're gonna be filming nonstop. So you don't ever want to miss a moment. You know, changing out the battery could mean missing that moment. So I have a 99 watt hour little V mount. That's pretty good. And then I also have a 149 watt hour V mount. That's also pretty good. I'll put links to them below. They do the job, they, they work. And that's all that matters to me. The second thing to highlight here is probably my, my shotgun mic. I use the DAD S mic 2. I have that on top of my camera. And then I may run like a lav with the H1N or something in my character's pocket. But having that shotgun mic on top of my camera, that's like a dedicated mic that sounds good on the camera is really important because I always put audio second and I really need to start putting it first. Get this. Bug, dude. I recently bought the DJI mic, which I'm hoping will be good. Or I'm also hoping it'll come in soon because apparently it's back ordered. But shotgun mics are good. Shotgun mic I got is good. 
And it's important to, just as important to invest in a good shotgun mic as it is to invest in a camera or a lens because audio is important. People are gonna, that's what people are listening to the whole time. You don't want gross audio. Pocket 4K has a mini XLR. So I got a mini XLR to an XLR cable and then just ran that into my camera. Came in handy to have my friend, Jared, I'll put his Instagram somewhere. He came in clutch because my cable was messing up. So he films on the same setup as me. So we just swapped cables. And uh, thank you, Jared, appreciate ya. Saved the day. Yeah, that was really important to, uh, to have that shotgun mic because you never know if his love that I have taped up on him will cut out or something might happen, I don't know. Maybe it's too scratchy because it's on the shirt. So having that shotgun mic, really, really good. So it's really important to be monitoring your sound as well. And to do that, like, I think the best method for me, for with this rig at least, is having like some earbuds, just plugging some earbuds into the camera. And it looks very low key, as opposed to something really bulky, like a headset or something. You know, if you can get somebody who knows sound, to deal with the sound stuff so that all you have to worry about is the uh, the directing and the filming if you're a solo filmmaker. But I guess then you're not really a solo filmmaker, you're a, you're a duo filmmaker. This bug really likes this mic or something. Yeah, I recommend that and I was trying to do that, but it's okay. Solo filmmaking, it's doable. And then the last thing to highlight here, which I think is really important, is uh, your lens choices on your documentary or rig. When people think like documentary or filmmaking or whatever, maybe you're thinking of like prime lenses, a nice set of uh, prime lenses that are really fast and the wide one, you got the tight one, they're beautiful, but that's a terrible idea for documentary filmmaking. And I'll tell you why. That's because when you're filming, you don't really have time to swap out lenses. I think swapping out lenses could mean missing a moment, most importantly. So I kind of roll with a Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter, which equates to like a 24 to 70 on the Pocket 4K, because it's micro four thirds. I need to get a full frame. I'm trying to get a full frame soon. It's a 2.8, so nice little aperture there. I plop an ND on there and call it a day. Having that versatility to be able to zoom in on any moment is really good. And I think that's probably ideal for, uh, for doc filmmaking, absolutely. The next video I'll be making is uh, on the day two BTS of uh, this documentary. So uh, hit me up with any comments or questions you have and I'll try to answer them. Day two kind of consisted of filming the same way, solo filmmaking, except I didn't have a, a BTS person. My dog is uh, sniffing the camera right now. And it turned out to be one of the best shoots I've ever done. It was like three hours long at a bowling alley. So stick around. We'll upload that one as well and let me know what you want to know. So yeah, that's my, my documentary filmmaking running gun rig. It's been really helpful to make those adjustments to my rig so that I have a better time filming. And I think you should too, if you are doing this type of style. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, leave a like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm gonna go uh, continue to work on this. Bye.